A peace that was truly permanent would be the same as a permanent war. This, although the vast majority of party members understand it only in a shallower sense, is the inner meaning of the party slogan, War is Peace. Emmanuel Goldstein, The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism. Hello and welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' great novel. Echoing the social tensions on display, the page now arrives with Teresa Panza's letters to the Duchess and Sancho. The Duchess allows the first letter to be read aloud. Teresa informs her that Sancho's fortune amazes everyone. In this town, everyone thinks that my husband is an idiot and outside of governing a tribe of goats, they can't imagine what sort of government he could be good for. Teresa again reveals her obsession with money and status. I am determined when going to court to lean back in a carriage so as to pop the eyes of the thousand envious neighbors that I have. And thus, I request that your excellency tell my husband to send me a little money and let it be enough for the expenses at court are great. For a third time, she dreams of the effect of riding in a coach. It being inevitable that many ask, who are the ladies in that carriage? And that a servant of mine respond, the wife and daughter of Sancho Panza, governor of the Isle of Barataria. Finally, hinting at Don Quixote's speech in part one, chapter 11, and the fallen golden age we are witnessing here, Teresa apologizes for the meager acorns that she has sent the Duchess. This year, they have not picked acorns in this town. And then she asks her to keep in touch. Your Magnificence shouldn't forget to write me. Is this a knowing wink, or is Teresa being as crude as Sancho? Did you know there were any number of powerful women in the early modern period? For example, Isabella I of Castile, Elizabeth I of England, Mary, Queen of Scots, Catherine de' Medici, and Anna de Mendoza de la Cerda. Manifesting a rude invasion of Sancho's privacy, Don Quixote now agrees to open and read the second letter. Teresa's letter to Sancho continues to contrast nobles and the masses. When I came to hear that you are a governor, I thought I might fall down dead from delight. Sanchica, your daughter, pissed herself without even knowing it from pure pleasure. Again, who would have thought that a goat herd was to rise to be a governor of Isles? Teresa makes an odd reference to her hope that Sancho will rise at least to the status of a tax collector. This recalls Cervantes' own job as a tax collector for the Armada in the 1580s. It also recalls the tax man whom the cross-dressed girl claimed was her father during Sancho's rounds at night in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 49. Teresa is brutally honest about the corruption of these officials. My plan is to see you made a collector of the wool tax or sales taxes, which are offices that if abused can send a person straight to hell, but after all, they always have and are handling money. Teresa then thanks Sancho for the tunic for Sanchica's dress, repeats that she wishes that she could have sent better acorns to the Duchess, I wish they could be made of gold, and asks Sancho to send her pearls if they are worn on that aisle. Finally, Teresa reports a series of anecdotal details about life in her town. The first hints at Cervantes' anti-monarchical attitude and harkens back to the Comuneros Rebellion against Charles V. A man was hired to paint the coat of arms of His Majesty above the doors of the town council. In the end, he didn't paint anything, saying that he was no good at painting such trash. This sounds like Cervantes himself with a hint of the Cincinnatus myth, for the painter returned the money and became a farmer. He has abandoned the brush and taken up the hoe, and he goes into the fields like a gentleman. Quixotic Mission. 
According to Sancho Panza's neighbors, our squire would be good for what kind of governing? A. The governing of women. B. The governing of goats. C. The governing of France. Correct answer, B. The governing of goats. The second story is religiously irreverent. The son of Pedro de Lobo has entered the priesthood, but Minguilla, the granddaughter of Mingo Silbato, claims Lobo is the father of her child. Next, Teresa takes a swipe at the army and the town's prostitutes. A company of soldiers passed through here on their way. They took three of the town's lasses with them. By contrast, Teresa then reveals that her daughter is generating income and saving money toward her dowry. Sanchica is doing some lace embroidery. Each day she clears eight maravedis, which she is setting aside in a money box to help with her dowry. Finally, lightning has struck the town's stocks and the well has dried up, but she doesn't care. That's all for now. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss it. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.